your host Eric Eisenberg and this week we are on the road for Hero Blend number 21. After a few weeks of searching, Marvel Studios has finally found a new director and a new writer to replace Edgar Wright on Ant-Man and to call them interesting choices is a severe understatement. There's a lot to talk about so check it out. I am pleased to welcome back to the show Roth Cornette from IGN. How are you doing? Hello, thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, so, as you guys are probably very aware, and as I'm sure you're very aware, uh, there's been a lot of shakeups at uh, Marvel Studios recently. As we discussed in last week's episode, Marvel has been dealing with the departure of Edgar Wright from yeah. Ant-Man. Uh, Ant-Man Gate. Ant-Man Gate, I guess, is that's a good name for it. It's a fish. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because uh, they've been, this has kind of been a big thing. Yeah, the last couple weeks, they've been searching hard for a new director. They've gone through names like Adam McKay, uh, Nick Stoller, Ruben Fleischer, uh, Rostin Thurber, uh, Michael Dowds, a lot of names. We a finally, lot of people turning it down. A lot of people weirdly turning it down. This is a Marvel Studios film. It's weird that people would reject it at this point in the game. But we finally do have a director now and a new writer in Peyton Reed and Adam McKay. Roth, let me hear what you got to think about, you got to say about this. It's interesting choices. I think that it's also very telling that they were so determined not, uh, we've speculated would they move the date, mm -hmm. you know, would sort of Doctor Strange take over yeah. that date perhaps, things like that. It tells me, I think, that they really do have this master plan. Yes. That the pieces, I mean, it's kind of interesting because I feel like there's less and less room for flexibility. Mm -hmm. The pieces are in place. They've got to be in place for the next thing to make sense. They know exactly what they need. I mean, uh, Kevin Feige has said that they have a plan going through 2028. Like, they, they have a long-term plan that they need to kind of keep moving in order of. I mean, that's kind of a big thing with them. It's clear. So it's interesting because Adam McKay, you, you know, you hear his name and you're immediately like, oh, Anchorman. Yeah. You know, there's a direct connection. They were only looking at comedic directors This is also. true. That's actually a very... I mean, Marvel, of course, has been known... Unlike DC, has been known for kind of the lighter, more mm -hmm. comedic stuff. But the directors they've been looking at are straight comedy directors. Strictly. It's, uh, it's very... I mean, it's... and. Other directors certainly have had that comedy sensibility, but this is by far the first time that they've gone strictly for that. And they sort of, and the interesting thing that Marvel's been doing is sort of they've been doing subgenre com, um, mm -hmm. comic book movies. You know, they've done sort of the subgenre of the the seventies spy thriller, spy thriller, Captain America, America, the, the space odyssey. He even had almost a noirish kind of new, uh, America, Captain, uh, Iron Man three. Mm -hmm. uh, but and so it's interesting that they are kind of going maybe possibly a little bit broader with yeah. Ant Man, and it's a character that I could see kind of lending itself to that, especially with a cast that is going to be led by Paul Rudd, right. who I personally can't wait to see in that role. And, the, and this, you know, Adam McKay does hard R comedy. It's yeah. like he's going to have to pull it back, obviously, mm -hmm. to do a Marvel movie, and I'm sure that he can um, work with that script to just punch up the, the comedy, but yeah. leave out the F-bombs here and there. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but Peyton. Uh, Peyton Reed. Um, and this is a guy who is probably best known for movies like Down With Love mm -hmm. and Bring It On. Um, who, and he's not exactly, he's definitely not a director who you know his name. He's not. And I think that even people, when it was announced, everyone went, Peyton, who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I definitely had to do an IMDb search before yeah. I was willing to make a reaction to this whole piece. Exactly. And then you look and you go, you know what? That actually kind of makes sense. Yep. Uh, he did Down With Love, which is this movie that is this direct homage to the Doris Day Rock Hudson comedies uh, I mean and I, it's very stylized mm -hmm. which I think is a great fit for Marvel it's, they need directors with a very specific uh, visual style and I think that Peyton Reed could be that guy I think he is too it yeah. does have a very specific it's got a real distinct tone to it but what's interesting to me is that Bring It On also has a distinct tone yeah. that's very different mm -hmm. you know they're both really funny movies they're both surprisingly funny movies you know I think you look at them on paper and, and you might I think I'm not interested in that. Sure. Maybe you're not. Um, but I do think Bring It On is funny. I think it's sardonic. You know, I haven't seen Bring It On, but I mean, I totally understand that. Like, most people, like, I remember viewing the trailers, I think, like a decade ago and saying to myself, that's ah, a stupid cheerleader comedy. What do I care? But at the same time, I've heard people like, smart people like you, they have told me years and years from past, you know, like, that it's actually a legitimate comedy worth checking out. And Down With Love, it's the same thing. It's, it's you look at it and you go, oh, this is just your standard rom-com, yeah. but it's not. It's quite surprisingly funny. Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, and, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say. I mean, I have seen Down with Love, and it is, and it is, as I said, very stylized. It uh, it totally harkens back to those kind of Doris Day rock cuts and comedies. His great editing, beautiful set design. Yeah. Like it's, 
it, 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 it's, it's sen- you get a very good sense of Peyton Reed's style with that film, and it's something that I think could lend well to potentially a superhero. I think so too, because the thing about him is that he can find the right voice for that story. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean, is that they both are distinctive voices, but they are appropriate to the story that they're telling. One's very much a cheerleader comedy, yep. one's not. You know, so... To me, that says, hey, listen, maybe he can go in and take the genesis of what Edgar Wright was creating Mm -hmm. and adapt to that and create a distinctive tone um, that works with what he sort of started. Yeah. And that's kind of cool to think about. Agreed. And, uh, I mean, I am curious what kind of direction the movie is going to go in with Adam McKay taking the helm. I mean, it it definitely seems that they are going to be moving away from Edgar Wright's vision, which seems necessary because, obviously, Edgar Wright wasn't working out with Marvel Studios. There was some kind of conflict there. Uh, Adam McKay is, I guess, more flexible to working within that. And uh, I know uh, Adam McKay... Thanks to his relationship with Will Ferrell, he has some supporters, he has some haters. Yeah. I personally love him. I think I've seen Step Brothers a hundred times and I laugh every time. Uh, I am very excited about that choice. I am too, and you made a good point about them both having television background. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, yeah. is, this is, look, we don't know exactly what went wrong with Edgar Wright, but we can it's speculate. It's hard to say. If you've ever seen behind the scenes footage or been on a set of his, that mm-hmm. is it. The man is exacting. He knows exactly what he <laughs> very wants. Very true. He storyboards everything. He has a very distinct vision. Mm-hmm. You cannot do that and be inside the studio. The larger system. You can't be a Marvel movie maker. And the truth is that, I mean, Marvel, uh, Edgar Wright first signed on to make Ant-Man back in 2006, which is two years before the release of Ant-Man, two years before anyone even had an idea of what the hell the Marvel Cinematic Universe could even be. Yeah. Hell, it wasn't, I mean, was it was an idea that was just so out there at the time at the time and so now and, it's not and now it's not and Edgar Wright was making a he was going to make an Ant-Man movie it sounds that was going to be very singular in itself obviously Marvel has much big as we discussed has much bigger v- visions for what they're planning uh, it seems like Edgar Wright's vision didn't fit in that and so what they needed was a filmmaker who could work within that system and I think tele- uh, finding filmmakers from television like Peyton Reed and Adam McKay that's a great resource that they've gone to multiple times. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, I really like Edgar, Edgar Wright, so, and I did think it was kind of sad because yeah. he had, for years, fought to get this made, mm-hmm. worked so hard, done that amazing test footage that we all saw at, at Comic-Con. Comic-Con. Yep. We all loved the idea of him doing his crazy Ant-Man movie. He's a genius director. I mean, he, there's no question about it. So uh, it is a sad breakup to yes. have seen as a fan of both Marvel movies and Edgar Wright, and mm-hmm. you wanted to work it out, and you, your heart kind of breaks for him. Yeah. Because it was his dream project. And, and I, who wouldn't want to see an Edgar Wright Ant Man movie? That sounds amazing, people. Well, Kevin, Kevin Feige, apparently. <laughs> apparently, Kevin Feige was not too big on it. But, um, but. but- I, going back to what I was saying about television, um, Adam McKay obviously spent years writing for Saturday Night Live. Uh, Peyton Reed both originally started in television. Uh, since uh, his fe- more features during the early aughts, has moved back into television. And the thing about the way the television system works versus film is that it's more of a collaborative environment. Obviously, in film, you have the director who is the head of the production. He calls the shots. And in Marvel Studios, that's not necessarily how it works. You know what's funny? It's I really, I think, yes, I think in general terms, like I think that people have, like Joss Whedon, mm-hmm. have to learn to negotiate with network notes and things Absolutely. like that and have to navigate those waters. So I think he was he was very prepared yeah. to deal with Marvel and, and create his own Marvel movie. And not only Joss Whedon, but also the Russo brothers for Captain America, right. Alan Taylor for Thor. Or the dark world. But the interesting thing is, though, I, I wouldn't say it is that black and white because okay. a lot of times showrunners really have a lot of control. Of course, yes. And some directors, if you're Cameron and you're, you're James Cameron is never going to make a Marvel movie <laughs> for a million different reasons, right. but he calls he really does call the shots. Exactly. So anyway, in any event, it's it, I, I know what you mean though. Yeah. No, it's 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 being it's being a part of a larger collaborative environment. Yeah. And not, that's not to say that Edgar Wright couldn't work with that. I mean, he has worked with co-writers before and he even has his own t- television experience having worked on uh, directing episodes of Spaced. Yeah. Um I think but, you make a really good point with that. I do. And I think that too the other thing is that what Marvel I think has done that's so interesting is like television where um, yes, there are network notes, but it mm-hmm. can be the voice of that show. Absolutely. Runner. So this, I think, we will see a James Gunn Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yes, but absolutely. It will be a James Gunn Marvel. Exactly, Guardians and I think you could say the same thing about uh, Shane Black and Iron Man oh, Three. Yeah. 
Iron Man 3 is a Shane Black movie through and through. If you watch Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, mm -hmm. Last Kiss Tonight, uh, Lethal Weapon, you can see the through lines through there. They're connected. I mean, it's clearly his film, and that's kind of why I'm excited about Peyton Reed and Adam McKay getting these jobs because they're both filmmakers who have a unique voice, who can work within a collaborative environment. You mix those two together, you can get some fantastic results. I'm, I'm excited to see. Look, at the end of the day, we just want to see a good movie. Of course. Um, I hope. I wish Edgar Wright really well. And yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Whatever he does next. <laughs> I hope we get a good eye on my movie. Yeah. So, Roth, well, hit me with your final thoughts. I'm, I'm on board. I, I think it's an interesting choice for all the reasons mm -hmm. that we've said. And, and I think it will work. I really, I think he, he does, he's not just a shooter. Yeah. He's a, he's a director with a vision. It'll be interesting to see what his vision is in this world. I don't know if he's a comic book fan, but... Well, that's something to find out we'll down find the line. Out. Uh, I mean, of course, there's now the question of whether they can actually do it on time because obviously this kind of set them back a little yeah. bit and their release date is now just a little over a year away. Um, production is going to be starting Atlanta very soon. It's going to be kind of rough going while he try, while they try and figure out the bearings here. It doesn't sound like it's going to be delayed, though. No, it doesn't. But you know what? If the internet had, had existed during yeah. some of the most famous films... <laughs> no, I mean, really... No, that's like, true. If you think about it, if the internet existed and you may not like this movie, you may love it... Um, Gone with the Wind, something yeah. like that. It couldn't hang on to a director. <laughs> no. They were shooting the movie before true. they cast Scarlet. You yeah. know? If we had had our jobs then, we would <laughs> have been, been tearing writing, it apart. We would have been saying it was a disaster. <laughs> you know. Would have been the Lone Ranger John Carter all over again. Yeah. But I have very high hopes for this film. I think that what it comes down to is if you can have trust in Marvel Studios, you can trust this decision, and I am very happy uh, with the decision. Roth, thank you so much for coming on the show with me again thank this week. Thank you. Uh, you guys, I will see you next week. Thank you so much.